Welcome to the Cranky Old Gamer. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bermuda Crisis. You guys may have seen my unboxing video. Really, really like the artwork on this game. Oh, this game is just gorgeous all around. As far as the gameplay goes, liked it. Didn't love it. Liked it a lot though. Uh, it's very kind of cutthroat, but there's a lot of different ways to win. Uh, kind of mixes a little bit of European kind of strategies mixed with like a take that card game. It's kind of an odd hybrid, but I really did enjoy it. Just a couple of little things that didn't thrill me. Um, by the way, today is January 2nd. I just want to wish you guys all a happy new year and happy 2017. Uh, if you're watching this video two years later, I hope 2017 was good for you. So, as far as how you play the game, uh, all of the players are dealt one of these basic skills maps or the advanced skills maps. Basic, you can see each level you just get one, uh, one skill per camp. And then the advanced, you actually get a lot of choices. <clears throat> and all of these skills are going to help you build further on in the game uh, and help you buy more abilities. Each turn, you draw common or rare items. Uh, common is things like coal or lumber or water, stuff that's everyday stuff all over the island. Uh, the rares are, what do we have? Oil, pearl, uh, gold, and diamond. Stuff that you may not find sitting around. There are a lot more rares than there are, or a lot more commons than there are rares. So what you're going to do with these, first off, you're going to take these uh, resources and you're going to start building things on your map. For example, uh, your, first <clears throat> your first basic skill under the engineering compound costs two lumber, two stone. Easy. Uh, that would get you once per turn. You may discard up to three resources to draw an additional amount of new resources. Okay, that's handy. You know, if you wanted stone and coal to make your basic for the mystics Camarilla, then you got lumber and water, you're going to want to trade that out. Uh, as you move on through the thing, there's going to be all kinds of different skills, make things cheaper, make things easier, uh, give you bonuses, and each one of these little dots counts as a victory point. The goal is to get the most victory points. Um, I believe the victory point total is 14. Let's look at the rule book. Yes, 14 victory points. Um, however, we found that's not really viable. And here's why. Uh, the game works under a time constraint, but it's a fluctuating time constraint. You, you have your Discovery Dawning track. Looks like an hourglass, right? It's interesting because your tracker goes up this side and then around here, and you put what are called stability tokens, one for each player, and you put them here. And you keep going around, and every time you get here, you remove a stability token, keep going around, keep going around, until there's no stability token, and then you go down the side. Uh, if you get to the finish, the game is over no matter who has 14 victory points. At that point, it becomes, there's another stat called, an, called NP, where if, you, if nobody has the most victory points, or if nobody has 14, then you go by whoever has the most NP. Okay, um, I mean, this kind of goes along with what I said. There are multiple ways to score, multiple ways to win. Um, you could go for the victory points. Boom, you know, that is your beeline. Other people um, want to go for the NP. Lots of cards get that for you. Part of what's interesting about this is you can force it to go further. This is not just one move per turn. That Every turn, this does click further. However... As you go through your resource decks, you will find artifacts. Artifacts are all the same. Each card is exactly the same. You can use them to, you can draw a mystique card. We'll get to those. You can disable or enable a camp. What that means, the skill that I just bought, you can disable it. That sucks for me, not for you. Um, <clears throat> You can, it can become a wild resource. You know what? I need that last diamond to upgrade my camp. Boom. 
Uh, you can destroy any ambush or boost. If, if I uh, throw an ambush on you that's going to hurt your ability to play the game, boom, you can destroy it with this. Great. Uh, or there are cards called venture cards. Venture cards are these right here. And they're kind of interesting because they're double-sided. And one side is a benefit. The other side is a detriment. And obviously, you're going to set it benefit out so it benefits you. I can at any time rotate a venture card so that it's now hurting you. And then you would have to cast another artifact in order to flip it back to the benefit. So that's a pretty cool strategy. I actually really like the venture because the benefits are really good. You really want those. But the detriments can screw you. So it's kind of a gamble. I, I really dig that. Um, so as I was saying, there are mystique cards. Oh, sorry. I skipped a step. When you draw an artifact, every time you draw an artifact, skips a turn. No, not skips a turn, but you know what I mean. It gets, it gets you further down this, this hourglass. So you're really against a ticking clock, and that makes for some kind of hectic gameplay. Like, the game does not last that long. It's a pretty quick game. I think we played an advanced game in maybe half hour, 45 minutes, and that was learning. So... It, it can be a very quick game, and there are also other cards. If you've got the most NP, and I've got the most VP, and you're like, uh-oh, Cranky's going to win, but I have more NP, there are cards that will allow you to force this to move faster so that it ends before I get the victory points. That's a good strategy. I like that. So again, I talked about Mystique cards. There are those Venture cards I pointed out to you. There are Ambush cards, which are the black ones. They cost... Any three common uh, resources. They're like, let's say, Dark Dreams. On your turn, you may flip this card face up and keep it in front of you. At the end of your turn, draw one resource equal to the number of disabled camps there are in the game. So if we're playing a four-player game and you've disabled two, car uh, two of our camps, um, then you get two extra resources. <sighs> These stack. Uh, one of our gamers kept drawing this card and kept disabling our camps to the point where he was drawing a handful of cards every turn. Uh, as far as we could find in the rules, there is no limit to your hand size whatsoever. There were, we, there were times we had 20, 30 cards, and you kind of have to because the cost on some of these things is pretty high. Um, some of the ultimate skills like the ultimate asylum catalysts uh, in, oh, that's basic. Uh, in advanced, three gold, three coal, one diamond. So that's seven cards already. So uh, a couple of the other ones, uh, barricade. You can, you must make your opponents choose to discard either two resources or a mystique. Okay, cool. Um, so anyway, these are just think of them as like curses that you're casting on someone. Then you have boosts. Boosts are pretty cool. Um, they help you, obviously, from the name. Uh, Gift of the Sun. As long as this camp you can use its basic ability you may use its advanced abilities so what that means is like i can cast that on my engineering compound as long as i have the basic which is once per turn i can discard up to three and redraw i can also use the advanced which is i'm immune to ambush attacks i really wish i'd used that when we played one of our players really liked using ambushes. Um, Gift of the Moon. If you have six or fewer resources in your hand before drawing, draw one card. Sweet. So, uh, and again with the Venture cards, the green ones. Oh, uh, the boost cost any three rares. The Venture, any three ra resources, mix of commons or rares, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll take an example. Natural Refuge. Uh, as long as it's being good in the green, you get one victory point. Uh, if somebody flips it, you are down one victory point. Okay. What else? Uh, missing research. Uh, I'm sorry. Sci scientific discovery. If you have the lowest nature points or the lowest victory points, you get to draw two rare cards at the end of your turn. The detriment, missing research. Whenever an opponent buys an ambush or boost card they may choose from the discard pile. So if I flip your card, that benefits me. So those are your mystiques. Um, again, there's a lot of different ways you can gun for victory points. You can gun for mystiques to kind of screw over your fellow players. Uh, you can The venture cards are most of what has the NP, the little green symbol, the nature points. 
that's a good way to win as well. Um, there is one other way to win. And I got to be honest, I get it. Kind of meant to be like a wild card. We hated it. I won with this. And I still hate it. I was like, that, that feels like a cheap, hollow victory. Brinehorn's Scroll. If you manage to draw oops, all three of these and complete the scroll, you win. No matter what. Game over. Well, if the scroll was better hidden... Okay, like if I didn't know where it was, but it's the way the, deck is, the decks are laid out, I know one's a rare, one's a common, one's a uh, venture. So I'm just going to spam those three decks. I'm going to draw as many of those as I can. Now, you can also do things like trades, um, but I don't get why you would ever want to trade a Brinehorn Scroll. Like, hey, you need resources. I'll trade you these resources for your copy of Brinehorn Scroll, or the, the corner part. No, you're, you're going to win. Like, if you want the scroll, that tells me you want, you're going to use the scroll to win. I'm not going to give you that. Um, I get the idea. It was a solid idea, but I think in the future, we're going to take those out. We're going to take Brinehorn Scroll out. It just, eh, I, I, it was a good idea. I, I didn't like the execution of it. It just doesn't work for me. Um, so ultimately, I really like this game. The Brinehorn Scroll, eh. Um, the artwork, again, I cannot stop talking about how gorgeous this artwork is. I mean, even just the basic, basic cards. You know, like, you've got your card backs here. You know, those enough are, are gorgeous. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to uh, talk about the, the last type of card. Catalysts. Catalysts are basically quests. Uh, there are certain things that can ca cause you to draw a Catalyst card. Um, and if you fulfill them, you get... I think they count as a victory point. I have to look these up. We didn't get a whole lot of usage out of these. Um, but they'll have numbers at the bottom. You can see if it'll focus. The negative seven and negative eight does not mean you, or positive eight, does not mean you lose seven or gain eight. What that means is your victory points total. If you are at seven or lower, then you need to meet the top requirement. If you're at eight victory points or higher, then you need to meet the bottom requirement. Uh, there are some abilities that let you meet either one. Uh, there's a... Ah, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> um, but there's an ability that says you can, you can complete either catalyst objective regardless of your victory points. Cool, handy. But these definitely help out towards your win. These are kind of a wild card. They could be good or bad. These boost you up. These attack your opponents. All in all, it's a pretty good game. Um, there's a really good balance of resource management and tableau building, as well as aggressiveness and take that. You can play however you want. Um, however, I did find it a little challenging when I was trying to just build my camp and work from there and go. I was going for victory points, and when I had my other players going for the aggressive ambush, 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 ambush. Okay, I kind of screwed my theory or my strategy, but that's that's part of the game. That's you know you have to roll into the fact that your strategy is going to be thwarted by other players. So, the Bermuda Crisis, um, definitely recommend this one. Definitely check it out. Uh, we, were, we will probably play this again a couple times. That's kind of become my barometer on games. Uh, will I play it again? Yeah. Yeah, I think we will. Uh, the, it was a lot of fun. It's very... It seems complicated. You have all these different cards. And the, the one of the things you guys always know, on, if you've watched my videos, I hate a bad rule book. A bad rule book will ruin a game. Thankfully, this has a very good rule book. Uh, it's beautiful. The art is just as good as the rest of the game. And it's very logically laid out. The rule book makes sense. It guides you through it. There were a couple minor, and I wish I could remember, I should have written them down. Um, there were a couple of minor things that it left unclear, but nothing we couldn't figure out. 
it walks you through like you're learning the game. You know, it talks about quick rules and then delves into the specifics later. It talks about the cards. It breaks down every little bit of each thing where it should be. I hate when a rule book says, here's this rule about this type of card, and then 20 pages later, oh yeah, by the way, this card, again, there's another rule about it. Don't forget this. Why, why put it here? Don't, don't split it up. Why would you do that? So yeah. All right, guys. Once again, The Bermuda Crisis. I hope you guys check it out. Um, I will put a link down below where you can get it. And I, I think you'll really enjoy it. It plays up to um, four players. Okay. I, four players is a decent sized group. Time to learn five to ten minutes. Yeah, that's, that's about how long it took us. We were playing right away. So, all right, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I do have some news. Uh, the holidays have passed. And one thing I've talked about is, you know, wanting to make my channel better. I am currently recording this video on my phone as I have all of my videos up until now. I like my phone. It's done very well for me, but I've always thought I could do better. For the holidays. I got a nice little Canon HD. It is touchscreen HD camcorder. I have an actual tripod. Um, I have a confession. I haven't owned a tripod. So my current tripod is one of those little gorilla, like grippy, bendy tripod things that's about this tall on a stack of empty Amazon boxes of games I've ordered. So I can finally throw away my stack of boxes. I have a honest to God tripod. So I'm very excited. Uh, the only reason I'm recording this on my phone instead of this, I haven't learned how to use this yet. It's a little complicated. I I'm sure it's not that big a deal, but it's a little bit more than my phone and going boop, record. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you guys have checked out my website, uh, www.thecrankyoldgamer.com. Uh, I don't just put my videos there. You can check out, like, I, ha I made a custom Zombicide character, put them on there. Uh, anytime we have game nights, I try to put, like, kind of highlights, news that I hear, I'll put it on there, uh, blog entries, whatever. And I want to hear back from you guys too. I want to know what you guys want to see on my video or on my website. So please check it out. Once again, www.thecrankyoldgamer.com. Uh, please also check out my Instagram, The Cranky Old Gamer. And if you guys like my channel and you want to support me, please check out my Patreon, The Cranky Old Gamer. Uh, there'll be a link on the screen at the end. Even if you only donate a couple dollars, that's going to help me out a lot. So. Happy New Year, guys. January 2nd right now. Uh, hope you guys have a wonderful 2017. I'm going to keep putting out videos. Hope you guys are going to keep watching. We'll see you later.